Number one, resist the tendency to live an isolated life. Select a few individuals, not a lot. Nobody has a lot of intimate friends. Throughout our lifetime, four, maybe five, if that many. Stay close to those people. Even though your lives may be geographically removed, stay close. Thanks to the electronic world in which we live, you're a, you're a few clicks away. Be in touch. Talk to them. Have them enter your life and you enter their life. If you wait till later to have the friends, it's too late. Pull them up closer now. Number two, get over those who disappoint you. Get over those who disappoint you. People are people. Every one of us is sinners. Some are disloyal. Others simply let us down. Others have a way of breaking their promises. Well, go on, even though they break their promises. Don't waste your time on those who have disappointed you. Refuse to let those people steal your joy or drain your energy. Believe me, there will be those who will disappoint you. Hopefully you will come toward the end of your life and hardly be able to name one of them because you've lived on and not allowed them to become the focus of your thoughts. There will be those who will simply walk out of your life. Let them walk. Number three, lift up and encourage those who have failed. Lift up and encourage those who are recovering from failure. It's a better way to put it. Who are recovering from failure. I tell you what, folks, the passing of years will do a whole lot to your rigid mindset, your narrow convictions, especially your judgmental attitude toward failures. The reason it will help is because during those years, you have failed even more often. That mellows you. And you're able to see beyond a great failure of another person way back when. Do your best uh, to treat people with grace. I've never regretted helping a failure recover. Never once. I've been warned by friends that I will be sorry I did that. I've been told by some that it'll hurt my ministry neither happened. Some are engaged in God's work today with full energy because some of us cared enough to help them back on their feet. Lift up and encourage those recovering from a failure. Number four, let the Lord handle your critics. Let the Lord handle your critics. Stop going to the internet and see what it says about you. Because there's always a bunch of fools out there that have come to conclusions, most of which are false, but they've decided they're true, so they think what they need to do is to spread the gospel. Their kind of gospel. Nothing your critic wants more than for you to fight back because he loves to fight. And he never runs out of ammunition. It seems like he has a lot of time to do it, or she does. Let the Lord handle your critics. Greatest thing you can do with a critic is ignore them. Just absolutely give them over to the Lord. He can handle them. Number five. Stay fully focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. I have no idea what the Lord has in mind for you. I hope it is absolutely beyond all you could even imagine or think. Be ready for surprises. He's full of them. I've never regretted one time when I decided 
I would at this moment, I will at this moment focus on my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now that is the way to live.